hello 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 i'm just sitting here reading comments i'm so excited to see you guys and i recognize some of your names you were here two weeks ago that means i didn't blow it too bad that you decided to come back for my second youtube live um so we're gonna wait just a second here and let everybody get on um if someone could leave me a comment and just make sure you can hear me and see me okay that just kind of gives me the assurance that everything is working good i've got got the screen up there screen there um but i just before we dig in i want to make sure we're going okay here um let's see am i Oh, good. You can hear me good. Thank you, Linda. Well, welcome, guys. I am excited to be here stamping live with you again on YouTube. Um, like I said, this is my second one. I Two weeks ago, I went live, and my plan is to do this every two weeks. Fingers crossed technology works, and we can work it out, and who knows? Maybe we'll do it more often, but that's the plan right now. Um, Thank you. Thank you for those of you that left us comments last time. You had some great suggestions. I'm still working on the tech side of it, hopefully to kind of get the, the picture in picture a little bit bigger for you. I've got some plans. I've got some technology gadgets on their way. So hopefully we'll improve on that. We'll improve on all of it as we go. So before we dive in, I would like to just introduce Megan. Megan Justice is my moderator. So you'll see her replying to some of your comments. Um, if you have a question, she may answer it for you. She'll drop some links in the chat um, to refer to things that I talk about. Um, she's trying her best. Um, sometimes comments get going really quick. And if you leave one um, and she misses it, please don't be afraid to even leave it as a regular comment once the YouTube Live is done. Or email me or message me. I would love to help you in any way that I can. So for those that don't know me, I am Jackie Ballheis. I'm coming live to you from cold Holland, Michigan. And I am going to be sharing a fun project today focusing on using the Stamparatus. Now, before we dive in, if you don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, I would love to be yours. I'd love to send you a catalog if you need one. I'd love to help you place an order or anything, anything you need. So one of the links you're going to see often that Megan's going to share, and it will also be in the description of the video, is a link over to my website. Now that's important because over there you can request a catalog. And most importantly, I think there will be a corresponding blog post that goes with this project, with this video today. I will have pictures of all the cards I have to share with you. And I'm looking, I got like four, eight, oh gosh, we're going to probably see a dozen cards before we're done. And I'll have pictures of them. I'll have the recipes, which really means just all the cutting directions and a list of all the supplies I used. So you don't have to worry about trying to remember that or jot it down as we're going along here. So you can just sit and enjoy um, the project that I have for you and then go over there and grab all the details. So I think without further ado, we need to flip these cameras down. Let's, um, we're gonna go like this and make our stamping area our biggest one for you so that you can see what we're making today. Now, if you are not familiar with the Stamparatus, it is a stamp placement tool. And there's several different things that you can do with it. Um, as a matter of fact, I have a video coming up. It's probably going to be in about a month. Um, I'm working my way through a whole series of videos focusing on different what I'm calling components of card making. And one of them is going to be tools. And we're going to dig in really deep to the Stamparatus because there's so many different ways to use it, um, depending on what, you know, what kind of project you're doing or what you want to do. So that'll be more like inclusive of everything. Today, we are going to just focus on one of the techniques that you can do with it so that we can make some fun cards with the biggest wish stamp set. I love this set. I love big and bold, um, especially because it helps me make quick and easy cards. And if you follow me, you know I am all about quick and easy cards. You know, stamping, it shouldn't be hard. It shouldn't take you forever to make a card. And I like to kind of show you how you don't need a ton of supplies. Um, so we're kind of doing that again today. Now, this biggest wish, what I love about it is I can make thank you, birthday, um, just thinking of you well, for whatever reason, for a friend, or there's so many options with these. And you've got the big words, 
um, the big bold words, and then you have this great script as well. Now, the technique that we're going to be doing is called hinge stamping. Stampin' Up! actually has several different stamp sets designed to do the hinge stamping. Um, it, it's just the way the size and the spacing all works out. And this is a perfect example of it. And that's why I wanted to do this one with you today. Now, we are going to start out, well, a little bit about the Stamparatus. Like I said, this isn't going to be real comprehensive. But when you do get the Stamparatus, you're going to have a foam plate or foam mat that comes with it, along with two of the plates. I like that these plates come out. And when you get two, you really have four surfaces because you can flip them and use both sides of them. Then there's this little add-on that I like. It's the, I think they call this the deluxe foam mat. It's a separate purchase. It's not very expensive, but I think I just like the surface of it better. It doesn't get dirty. It'll wipe off. Um, and then you get your grid on here as well. So let's go ahead and we're going to start by... Um, taking a piece of basic white here. Now, you know, different people will share, I guess, different tips and techniques with it. I like to always start with a piece of cardstock that's a little bit bigger than I need, and then I'll trim it down afterwards. I just find that's a little bit easier for placement, and, you know, you don't have to get so precise about where you're putting things. So we have a piece of basic white here. Now, the Stamparatus does come with two magnets. Sometimes I use them, sometimes I don't. Um, use, actually, the samples that I made, I don't think I used them on, on any of them, but I thought I'd pull them out to show you. Now, you'll notice this piece is ripped off. But on, ooh, that was a close call. That's what I want to tell you not to do. Um, you'll notice I have some washi tape wrapped around that. That's just to make them easier to grab. Now, these are super strong magnets. You want to make sure you always keep them apart from each other because if they get too close, they're going to attract each other. You guys know how magnets work. Um, you can kind of pinch your finger in them and you can also shatter these magnets. So I always say when you're working, keep one way over here on the left and one way over here on the right so that they don't get too close together. So we'll go ahead and stick some on here. And let's get started here. I have the stamp. We're going to make a birthday card to start out with. So I have, and you know what? I think for this one, I want to turn this cardstock this way. Let's make sure we get it on here the right way for kind of my plan. And like I said, this is bigger than I need. So I'm going to figure out, eh, I think about right there is where I'm going to want my happy on the card I'm making. So I lay it on there first, and then I go ahead and I pick up that stamp by closing the plate on it and lifting it up. Now notice it was clean. You gotta be really careful. If your stamp's dirty, I would have gotten a mark on there. Um, but now I know it's exactly where I want it. Now you'll notice I have a stamp pad sitting underneath my plate here. The plate is actually at a little bit of an angle. I found when I ink it up, if I put a stamp pad underneath it, it makes it more level and it, to me, it's just a little bit easier to ink up. So I always just throw a, a stamp pad, you know, that's sitting around on there. So we are going to use Coastal Cabana. This has been kind of a color of choice lately. And you're going to just dab it on our stamp like so. And then to stamp this image, we're going to just flip it over and then give it some good pressure. Okay. And we're going to pick it back up. Now, one of the beauties of the Stamparatus is... If that color's not as dark as you want it, or maybe you didn't ink it even, or you didn't give it even pressure, you can always restamp things. You know, to me, that's probably the biggest reason to use a Stamparatus is you can always go over it. Now watch the magic. This is where that hinge stamping comes into play. I'm gonna pull this out and just bump it down one hinge. There's all these little slots on there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and close it and stamp it again without re-inking. So you'll see, it's kind of light. I don't know if you can see that real well on the camera or not, but we have happy and we have happy again. Just gives it a fun, a fun look that way. Now we're gonna go ahead and we wanna stamp birthday. And I'm gonna stamp this over that faded out one. So once again, I'm going to close that up and I'm gonna take this plate and I'm gonna flip it around put it back in that top hinge, close it and pick up birthday. And this is what I like, you know, how this plate comes off because you can essentially use both sides of it. So let's grab our black this time. 
And we're gonna ink that one up, ink it up, go ahead and close it, give it some good pressure. And there we go. We've got happy, happy birthday. Now, if I was making multiples of these, this is the fun part. I could take that paper, I could flip back over here to where I have my happy, ink that up, stamp it, move it down, stamp it, flip it, ink up birthday, close it, and we could just whip out a whole bunch of these because we know we have our placement on there already. So that's kind of the beauty of having, you know, those plates that you can mix and match. And like I said, you get two of them. So I have a whole nother one. I could have four different things lined up and ready to go. So let's take our magnets off, leave them separate left and right. Let's set this aside and we're gonna finish up this card. And then I've got several other ones to show you. And then we're gonna stamp another one so I can show you a few other um, designs using this stamp set um, with that hinge stamping. Now I did do a little bit of magic at TV here and I used a stitched rectangle die to cut out one that I stamped before I came live to do our card. Now, you know, I said you don't need a ton of supplies always to make cards. I, I think sometimes we get overwhelmed with we need this and we need that. And we need everything. So I'm keeping this pretty simple. Note card and envelope. These come as a package of 20. I use these all the time. And then I have some Coastal Cabana card, um, designer series paper. So this comes in each color group. So I use these papers a lot. And I think that's one of the beauties of Stampin' Up! products is when the ink and the cardstock and the designer series paper and everything coordinates. So we're going to go ahead and put that on the front of our little note card. And then because I'm not going to use a lot of embellishments and ribbon and all of that, I just put a little strays on there. I cut a couple quarter inch strips here of black. Um, you guys know I love black, my pop of color. Um, you know, no matter what color I'm using, I tend to add that pop of black. I think it just kind of sets everything aside. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Like, oh, let's slide that over. So there's, that's going to be our embellishment. And it's really just cardstock. And then, of course, you got to use dimensionals. It's almost impossible to make a card without dimensionals. And so we're going to stick about five on there and peel these off. Now, the beauty of this card and this card design, I could do this with any of those greetings. And I'll show you some more here in a second. And any color. Now, I happen to make this, you know, monochromatic. We got Coastal Cabana Designer Series paper, Coastal Cabana ink with that little pop of black. Um, now, let's finish this up. Make sure you always decorate your envelopes. I like to use the Coordinating Designer Series paper on my envelope as well. So I am going to just take the leftover piece from cutting that six by six sheet, and we're gonna rub it on there. And you know what, I'm missing my snips here. So I think we're gonna cheat here a second as well. So I glued that on there, and you can see here, all I would do now is take my snips and just trim around there like so to make my coordinating envelope. I'll do that when we're done here. Now, we got to stamp the inside of this one. So I have another stamp set sitting here that is a really good go-to stamp set, um, you know, for verses, especially in the inside, um, Sunny Sentiments. So we're going to use Hoping Your Birthday is Filled with All the Best Things because it's a happy birthday card. So again, we're just going to grab that black pad um, and we will stamp that on the inside like so. Could have used a stamparatus, but like for that greeting, I didn't feel like I really needed to. And there is that our happy birthday note card. Now, let me show you the other ones that I did with this exact same design. And then I'll show you another version of stamping with the stamparatus. So we'll cut this envelope off later on. So that'll be one of them. Here is the exact same card, and um, happy birthday again. This time we use Bumblebee, I believe, as my ink. Um, and I think all of these, I actually put a little strip of the designer series paper on the inside as well. So there is that one. And then I just started playing with all the different options in the stamp set. So we have hello, hello friend, and thought you could use some sunny thoughts today. 
So this is where you can see that Sunny Sentiments worked perfect with all of these. So these two stamp sets really go hand in hand. So we have thanks and thank you for all the little things you do. But you can see how these are all the same. Um, this one I used a little bit larger of the rectangle die because we've got birthday, 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 happy, happy. Just kind of put more on there, if you will. Um, and I think, oh, this one, hello, hello. And we've got the, the friend going three times. So you can just play and play and play. When I made these cards, I just grabbed a whole bunch of quarter sheets of white and just started playing with different colors and, and different words. And how can I put the different ones together? So let's set these all aside here. And I want to play a little bit more with that Stamparatus for you because I want you to just to see how super cool this um, hinge stamping is. Now you can just use your chamois, should have done that before I cleaned it, um, to clean, clean these off. I make sure my chamois is wrung out really good so it's not um, dripping, it's not you know beating up at all. And we'll peel those off of here. And let's grab another piece of cardstock and we'll put it up here. Now, the other thing, like I said, I don't use magnets a whole lot. Um, so I tend to use more the corner because if I have to restamp something, I know as long as I have it tight in the corner, I'm good to go. So let's just do that. And then let's grab the stamp set. Let's see if we did happy birthday. Why don't we go ahead and we will do thanks on this one. How's that? Thank you, friend. And this time we're going to use multiple colors. So let's open up our Granny Apple Green and then our Melon Mambo. Um, we'll keep our pad underneath there. And what I'm going to do is start out, we're going to start up pretty close to the top here. Let's see, I think that'll be big enough on it. We'll see. And we'll pick that one up like so. And I'm going to start with the Granny Apple Green. Oh, that did not work so good, did it? I didn't have it stuck on there. So make sure when you pick it up, I don't want to get ink all over my hands because then I'm going to get it all over the white. So let's clean that. You know what? I'll tell you what went wrong there. When I closed um, this to pick it up, I didn't press it down really good. There we go. It should stick to that cardstock a little bit. So make sure that's on there good. Phew! There we go. We always almost messed that one up really good, didn't we? So we're going to stamp the thanks. Now, instead of moving down one, I'm going to move down two. So one, two, and we're going to stamp it again. Now, like I said, with the stamps that Stampin' Up! kind of designed with the Stamparatus in mind, they've made them so that everything is equally spaced for you. So we know this space in here is going to be perfect to go up one. So this time, let's go ahead and let's use our Melon Mambo and we'll ink that one up. And I'm going to come down one, okay? So we're going to have four here all together. So we'll stamp that in the full strength dark and then we can come up to one, two to fill in our little space like so. But I think that really shows you, look at how absolutely perfect those are um, aligned. Now, I've seen where you could do a whole background. You know, if you wanted to have these moved over to this side, you could um, then, you know, take this off and move it to your next spot and come down. But it's just perfect for this um, lining up for, you know, what we're calling hinge stamping. Now we can go ahead and let's flip that. What did I say we were using? Friend. So I think we're going to put it down here on that granny apple green just because it's a little bit lighter. So we'll you see how I put it where I wanted it. Then I picked it up and then we can take our black, ink that up, close it. And there we go. Now, remember, this is, again, beauty of this. That one actually stamped really good, but let's say it didn't. I could easily ink that up again, make sure I'm tight in that corner because it should stamp in the exact same place. And now I actually have a much darker black. I will do this sometimes just, um, 
you know, the whole card might not be using the Stamparatus, but I'll do it for a greeting just to really get that deep, dark, crisp black because I'm all about the black. So let's go ahead and set this aside one more time. And I'm going to just share. I'm not, the rest of this is really just putting some cards together. And these are the ones that I will have for you, the measurements um, over on the blog post. Okay. Um, but you can see here, I kind of lined it. I went dark and then light, dark and then light, and then another dark one. Um, and I think, did I play? I was playing here. I, yeah, that's kind of the same thing I did here. Actually, that's got five. I like the looks of this one almost better than the five. I think that balanced out really nice with, with those colors on that one. And then, uh, like I said, I sat and I played and I played. And here, I just did three of them. And so I did the one color and then the second color. So I went dark and then moved it down and did a light and added birthday. But you can see with, especially with all of these cards, how you can just use mix and match and use the different words with different colors. And with this one stamp set, you can make a card for just about anything. And you could jazz these up. You could put embellishments and ribbon and, you know, what more layers and die cuts or whatever you want on them. But um, I wanted to keep them simple to really just focus on how easy it is to use this stamp set. Okay, remember, I'll have measurements for all of these on that blog post for you. Now, one more set of cards that I want to share with you before we call it a wrap for today is I made a whole set of cards here. These are full size. These didn't use the note cards. And I didn't necessarily use the, um, the Stamparatus on these because I didn't do any of that hinge stamping. But I wanted to show you again with a pop of black, um, pretty much a monochromatic card layout, how you can mix and match all the different greetings that are part of the stamp set. So we just have Hello Friend, and I used the tag dies. And you can see where I use just two different sizes. These are stuck down with dimensionals, but I offset this one a little bit. There is a little hole up here, so that lined up. And then I was able to just tie a bow um, in there. So there we have our Hello Friend, and I did coordinating envelopes with each one of these. And same layout, different color, different words. Happy birthday. And there's those tags. These, I love these cards. I was so happy how these turned out. Um, I hope you like them too. So again, hello, friend. What do we have down there? Oh, this is fun because there's the bold and there's the script. You can see both of these are hello, friend, but I reversed the bold and the script one on those. And I guess I did that with these too. I didn't realize that until right now. And um, we've got the bold birthday. So we have happy birthday. And here we have the bold happy. So there is our happy birthday card as well. And again, we could. there's more combinations. You could use all of these pieces to, to put together all different options. So what do you think? Lots of different card ideas that I shared with you, really focusing on that stamp set, using that hinge stamping. And then cards can be pretty monochromatic, one ink pad plus black and some coordinating colored designer series paper or cardstock or whatever you prefer to use. So thank you. That is all I have. Now, remember, I'm going to be doing a Stamparatus video probably in a month or so. And we're going to dig into all the different options for, um, for that. So a couple other things. Remember, blog post will have all the information and over there you can place an order as well. If you'd like to order any of these products that I shared with you or anything else from Stampin' Up, I truly appreciate it when you select me to be your demonstrator. The other thing is get on my newsletter. I have an email newsletter that I send out once a week on Fridays and I always have at least two, sometimes more, to free tutorials in it that you can download and print. And they're always different, all different types of projects. And I always tell people, look at it more than for the stamps that were used on that particular tutorial, because you might not have the same stamps, but you can probably use the idea, the layout, the colors. There's always something you can take from a card if you don't have all of the supplies to make it. So make sure you get on my email list. You can do that as well over on my website. Otherwise, I know Megan's been dropping the link as well into the live chat. So questions, if we haven't answered them, please reach out to us. Leave a regular comment on the YouTube video when we're all done 
or on my website. You can contact me there um, via email as well. Thank you for spending some time with me. I so appreciate it. I hope you learned some tips, whether you're a brand new stamper or you've been stamping for as long as I have. I feel we can always learn different tips to make quick and easy cards. So thanks, guys. I'll be back live in two weeks, and I'll be back Friday with my regular recorded videos with, with you for another fun project. We'll see you again real soon. Have a stamp happy day.